here today with Spencer, owner of Spencer Capelli Grooming for Men and Women. We are here today to talk about an industry that has allowed people to be self-employed entrepreneurs for centuries. Since entrepreneurship is at an all-time high, we're going to ask Spencer some basic fundamental questions on how to get in business, stay in business, and thrive at it. But first, we're going to start by asking him what made him want to become a barber. Uh, actually, I didn't want to be a barber. I used to cut my friends and family hair, and um, I wanted to be an architect. But the classes, the initial classes I needed were full. So my parents advised me to take something, so I took up barbering and uh, just stuck with it. I saw the money involved in it, and I just stayed with it. Do you remember getting your first pair of clippers? Yeah, I do. My dad used to cut our hair, and uh, when I started cutting hair, he gave me his. Okay. So that was my first pair. How old were you? Uh, probably about 14. 14. When did you realize you could really cut? After a few months, I, I saw that I had a knack for it. So you pretty much, it came to you naturally? Yes. Which haircut would you consider the hardest to learn? The hardest to learn was uh, not necessarily a style, but for people that you know may have had missing hair patches, how to make it still look presentable. Okay. What's your specialty? Do you have a specialty? I thought about it. Uh, I don't really have one. I would say maybe my lines are nice. Um, I hear most people come in and know on that, that aspect more than anything. Okay, now we're going to get a little bit more into the business aspect. What's some need-to-know info for a person trying to get a clientele and maintain it over the years? Advice or tips? Okay. I would say the first thing is naturally know how to cut. <laughs> um, you got to practice on your skill. Um, be an efficient, good barber and uh, make appointments because people don't like to sit around and wait and keep your appointments timely. Well, barbers have appointments? I thought you just walk in and just sit down and just wait your turn. <laughs> well, if you want to establish a clientele, then you need to set yourself above what other people do or most people and most people in the Birmingham area, most barbers don't have appointments. So the biggest complaint I get is having to wait. Mm. So you can, you know, eventually eliminate a lot of competition by setting appointments and keeping the appointments. In and out service. Yes. Okay. What type of advice would you have for someone about to open their shop for the first time for working in someone else's shop? About three times more work and uh, you need to find the best location possible. Location is everything. I know many people have heard it before, but it's true. Location and parking. What's your opinion on the new salon suites? I think it's nice for people that don't want the big salon atmosphere, uh, the more intimate atmosphere. I think it's nice for that. How important is equipment, brand names, and products that you use that play on your results? Since I'm a barber, my, the tools are important, keeping them clean, um, sharp, and in proper use. but. As far as products go, it's, it's really all in your hand um, outside of the tools. Would you say brand names matter for us, the tools that you use? No, I would say, you know, whatever works for you, that's what you should stick with. What would you say to a barber that doesn't retail? That they're missing out on some secondary income. Mm. What? one or some of the biggest changes in the barber game over the last 10 years? Locally, I haven't seen much. Um, but nationally, I think that the barber industry has came a long way um, to kind of compete more with the salon side or the hairstylist with competitions and more, you know, products, more schooling you know, for these products. So it's came a long way in that aspect.
Is there science behind the waves? Sir people stand in the mirror, brushing. Is it the do-rag? Is it the product? Is it the hair? What's the science behind the waves? There's really no science. Um, you can either genetically have them because of your hair texture, or you can't okay. without chemicals. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, there's really no science to it that I've found. So this is definitely a field to be able to take your take care of your family and grow in as an individual. Oh yeah, you can make this a career. That's all I've ever done. And do you have to go to school? Yes, you do. Okay, okay. Well, I want to thank Spencer, owner of Spencer Capelli Grooming for Men and Women, coming out, sharing information about the barber industry. Thank you for coming to Channel One. Thank you.